want to thank our sponsor, Parati's Quality Meats, located in Cranford, New Jersey, serving customers all over New Jersey for the past 50 years. Year. Welcome everyone to another edition of Coaches Talk presented by the Shore Football Report. And today I have a very special guest, uh, the head football coach of Central Golden Eagles football, Coach Jared Pigeon. Coach, thanks for coming on the show today. Thanks for having me. I uh, appreciate all the interviews. We've been having a good time uh, catching up and watching all the head coaches in the Shore, you know, talk a little bit, bit of ball and uh, yeah. you know, speak to you about their programs. Coach, Coach, I mean, You'll, you're going to realize as you coach more and more, you're going to, there's certain coaches that you kind of take a special interest in, guys that maybe you coached down the road, and then you see them blossom as coaches later on. And yourself, man, I had the pleasure when I first came to Barnicket, and I had your class, which was the last class that was going to Southern Regional, but I got a chance to coach you in basketball and baseball. And I saw, and, and, and all joking aside, I saw a lot of great qualities of you. Uh, that I see right now, and it doesn't change. Um, you were a leader back then. You were very aggressive, and you definitely used up all your fouls in middle school <laughs> basketball. And I knew you were going to be a Mike linebacker watching you play. But you were a great um, um, leader back in the day, and and that has probably hasn't changed with you right now, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, we had a good time. I mean, Barnegat Middle School, we had that. We had a good little run. Um, I, I was more of a, uh, a passer than a shooter. That was for sure. And, you know, defense, <laughs> you always love me diving on the floor, but um, absolutely tough. all the coaches that I kind of came across, it's a small coaching fraternity, especially being around uh, with my father growing up yeah. uh, around Chuck Donahue, even coach for and even yourself, yeah. um, you know, at the Lacey days when I was a ball boy running around with uh, my bowl. <laughs> cut so um all those things kind of come to fruition i see those guys across the sideline now it's you know it's kind of a surreal feeling but um, i'm happy to be where i am um, you know being a young head coach and just keep uh keep moving you know year by year but uh, i'm loving the process of it and you're going to start seeing that uh, you know as you move on you're going to be starting recruiting your own middle school basketball and baseball and you're going to see guys that that and, and we always use the term that got it and you can't describe it, but you just know the dude's got it. And you had it. There was something about you um, that that you just separated yourself. You had it. Maybe it wasn't your 40. It wasn't your bench press. But you just had the package that you had a gut feel from a coach that you're going to be something special. And that's what you are right now. So hopefully you can find another Jared Pigeon in your in your uh, district, you know, like I did. And, and I'm having a lot of fun watching you on the sidelines. And you got a lot of people that are rooting for you. So you got to be something yeah. – Got to be pretty ex excited about. Coach, let me introduce you, and then I'm going to let you take the floor with the process. All right, because right. we got a lot to talk about in your program, and I know you're excited about it too. Uh, coach Pigeon, this is his second year as the central head football coach. And um, boy, oh boy, and we'll talk more about it with the COVID, but starting your first season with what we experienced with the COVID had to be something that you never could, could plan for a coach. And there's head coaches out there for years, like a Chuck Donahue, like you cited, Lou Versillo, Cosentino Ashore. They didn't have a lot of expertise in this field too, because we were in a world of unknown with the COVID. And talking to you in the off season, <laughs> here you go. Here's your first season. How tough was it? Um. I mean, it was tough, but, you know, like anything else, you, you kind of adapt. Uh, you see everybody else. There was nobody to, uh, you know, go for information for, um, you know, speaking to yourself, you know, Coach Donahue, um, all those guys that try to help you out. Everybody was in the, in the unknown. So you kind of had to go day by day, um, take it step by step back then. And in March, we didn't even know if we were playing. So it was just more or less getting on the Google Classroom, making sure, you know, the accountability for my kids. The good thing about being the head coach at uh, Central was that it was an easy transition because those kids knew me and how, um, yeah. you know, my responsibilities for them. Um, they knew I was a character and academic guy first. So meeting every Friday on Google Meet, it wasn't more or less, you know, where I, I see some of the coaches doing the workouts. Um, we need to make sure our kids were accountable. And, you know, with my social work background, I wanted to make sure that the kids were mentally feasible and um, making sure they were doing the right things on their own. Um, there was a lot of kids that, you know, had their seasons canceled and everything. But, you know, more the mental aspect on my end. Um, making sure kids were, were fed and had food and anything that they needed, especially, you know, 
as far as academics were concerned. Um, but yeah, I, I really didn't have time to complain about it because my head was spinning. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you always had the plan, but that's what, uh, you know, makes it fun coaching. Um, every day there was nothing there was always something new it was always a new obstacle and it's going to be like that going forward and yeah. um you know it, it's a blessing for me honestly with that covid the first year because uh you know no one's ever seen that before and if i can get through that i can you know keep going and it, it can't get any worse than that right so um we did everything that we could you know that was best for the kids in the program and we thought we did a great job by doing that yeah and i talking to you in the off season coach um during that covid you you definitely were always about the kids first, worried about their mental, you know, your, their mental state and all that, which says a lot about you and how you're going to run your program. And and that'll never change because that's the way you always were when I had you back way back 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 in the day. But I will tell you this, it, it was tough for everybody. I couldn't even imagine a first year coach trying to set their program with that. But you know what? Things are going to only get easier for you right now. So, right. Yeah. As, okay. So before that, as the head coach, you were a loyal assistant for seven years. I think six of them, you were the defensive coordinator, right? Correct. Yep. Which was great. So you got those responsibilities at a really young age. Well-deserved though. You did a great job. You built a great reputation with your defenses. The kids ran through the wall for you. You could tell that, um, you know, they, a lot of stuff was getting done there on the defensive side of the ball. Um, what was your experiences as a defensive coordinator at such an early age? Uh, I mean, um, you know, I can't thank, uh, you know, Coach Jacobs enough. Coach Willie Jacobs, you know, gave me an opportunity at, uh, you know, not that I'm that old, but I'll, I think I was about 22, turning yeah. 23. Uh, he gave me an opportunity in 2014 to coach uh, um, the inside linebackers and help out um, with the running backs and, you know, Next year, one thing led to another. Some guys left, um, and you know he gave me an opportunity. He saw something in me, and um, I was going to take full advantage of that. You know, growing up around uh, high school football, um, I, I know that's what I wanted to do. At, a, at like you said, at a very young age, I, I knew football was my life. Um, it's everything that it's gotten me everything um, to school, and you know yeah. what I'm passionate about. But yeah, it's, it was trial by fire. I was a young guy. I thought I knew it all. Um, would blitz when I shouldn't have blitz. I was playing too soft when I should have been more aggressive. You, you know, all the things you learn mm. and you laugh at. Um, but I'm thankful for, you know, Coach Jacobs and then eventually Coach Ramondo mm. also giving me that um, responsibility as a, as a defense coordinator once again with a whole new transition of the staff. Um, those guys were great to me. Uh, I, you know, I'm forever indebted. I see uh, Coach Jacobs all the time, and I'm always thanking him, always trying to get him back out. But those guys <laughs> were very good to me. Um you know, we learned a lot. I went from a four, three to multiple three, four, um, you know, and it's just, you got to adapt with the teams that you're playing. I think we do a good job with that. And our kids buy into what we want them to do. Uh, we want to play fast. We want them to be knowledgeable and know the whys behind everything. Uh, I think that's very beneficial for us. Um, you know, and, and it's, it's been working out. Um, we think we do a great job. Our kids do a great job yeah. and, uh, you know, we, we love the defensive side of the ball over at Central. Yeah, both those head football coaches always spoke so highly about you when I talked right. to them during the season or off season, And, you know, no surprise. that That's great. That was their uh, pride having you as a defensive coordinator. And then before that, I'm going to let you take, take it over, but you were at Bloomsburg and had a great career there playing right there. Coach, that leads us right now to the process. The process is for you to take us from the first time you ever stepped on a football field and and all the steps leading up to you becoming the head football coach at Central, basically your resume. I want to hear right. all the stops and all the important people and the people that that made you who you are right now with that. So take us right down to the process. Of course. Um, I mean, uh, thinking back to it, uh, as long as I can remember, you know, being able to walk, I was always uh, attached to my father's hip. Yeah, I was yeah. in love with football. Um, my brother was a pretty good athlete. Um, and he, he went to Southern before me. So uh, I believe Coach Donnie, you got to, to Southern Regional around 99, if I'm not mistaken, 98, 99. Yep. Um, my brother was the early 2000s. Um, you know, so Coach Donnie did a great job in, in, you know, embedding himself in the community. So I was at every little kid's camp. Uh, you know, now he's got hundreds of kids. I remember when it was only like 20 or 30 kids. Um, and I was at every one of them. Um, you know, and I fell in love with those guys and the way they did things, doing things the right way. Um, you know, and as I got older, you know, I, I came in the middle school and 
Um, you know, I was playing both sports, believe it or not. I would go from middle school soccer to, you know, football practice, getting changed in the back of the car. Um, and then the same thing kind of went for, you know, when I was playing under you to uh, lacrosse, mm-hmm. you know, kind of transition that sport. You know, my father at the time was a head head coach at the varsity baseball team at Southern. So I definitely didn't want to play under him, um, <laughs> you know, going over there. So I wanted to play lacrosse and kind of get my own identity because my brother was a pretty good baseball player. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, but, you know, in the middle school, my father at the time was uh, coaching under uh, Lou Rosillo at Lacey. Um, so I took at, upon every moment to uh, get with him. I was waking up early. I knew what the, the process took, especially at that age, um, being, you know, fifth, sixth grade uh, under Coach V, going out to lunches and, and doing the two days at that time and loving every second of it because you guys would have staff meetings and I'd be know biting ankles in the locker room and they'd be beating me up and uh, I wouldn't treat them for the world um you know and as I got older I got to Southern Regional you know under coach Donahue um you know my dad eventually ended up transitioning over to the Southern so I had you know just right there I had two Hall of Fame head coaches so I knew the way things should be done um there was a a right way and a wrong way to do it and you got to be on time and you got to be prepared um as I got through high school, we had an okay career. We had some good good seasons there. We had some great uh, talent come through there. We had, we always had great coaching there. Um, I went to I – didn't, I didn't take care of business in the classroom, so I had to go to uh, Valley Forge Military Prep School. So uh, after Southern Regional, I went there. Um, it was tough. I, I was young for my age. I graduated at 17, so I, kinda, I had to mature a little bit, um, both physically and, uh, you know, mentally. We went out there, uh, went through the whole boot camp, did the whole military background, which is a, a culture shock to me. And that was some really good football. Um, during that prep year, you know, we played uh, Don Bosco. We played the Hunt School. We played all those privates, Blair Academy. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, that's what got my exposure to uh, the PSAC schools and some low double A's. You know, just like any other 17 or 18 year old kid, you couldn't really tell me anything. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I knew I wanted to play football. I knew, I knew that for a fact. And I wanted to play on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, Bloomsburg University took an interest in me um, and they recruited me pretty heavily and I went up there and fell in love with it. Um, it, it was grimy football. It was, it was hard nose, like you're downhill, you're hitting. Um, they were going to run the ball, you know, 45 times a game. We were going to, you know, make big third down stops and cover the cover kicks. Um, you know, if you know anything about coach over at Southern, that's exactly what we did. Um, and we did the same thing up at Bloomsburg and we had a very successful career up there. We won over 40 games. Um, each year I was there, we were always top 10 in the country competing for a championship. Um, and that, you know, up there, football's different. They live it and breathe it. Uh, you know, it's like the Friday nights era where the, the small mm-hmm. town shut down on Friday nights and being a college kid, I would work, um, you know, the chains and stuff and try to do all that. And you, you see some Southern Columbia's who's got like one of the best max prep records. And that's like mm-hmm. 20 minutes away from Bloomsburg. So you saw some dudes that didn't really lose a lot of games and winning was everything. Um, so that gets instilled in you. Um, after that, I, yeah, I don't know, after college, uh, took a little uh, leeway, went to Westchester. Um, I had a job at Glen Mills for a little bit where I fell in love with uh, the social work aspect of things. I went to a juvenile, um, how do you call it, juvenile facility for uh, second chances for troubled youth. I uh, started coaching. I coached at anything there. Kind of looked like a misfit, but uh, I was coaching volleyball. I was coaching wrestling. I didn't know anything about wrestling. And, uh, you know, of course, they compete in the PIAA and the Delco over there. So, uh, you know, I started volunteering for, you know, some some football. And it, that was tough, man. Uh, you think kids are tough here, but the, those mm-hmm. kids had some tough backgrounds from anywhere from Texas to California, mm-hmm. Florida. Um, you know, and then I moved back home. I needed a change. I was going back. I was finishing up my master's in social work. Uh, I was about 22, 23. Um, was looking around for some jobs and, you know, Central Regional popped up. We knew some people over there. We got in. Um, Willie Jacobs, you know, I, like I said, man, I can't be uh, any more indebted to them. And what a great staff we had in 2014. Just a great group of guys. Chris Loveland, um, he's a state trooper now. He let me under. It wasn't, you know, too bold. He always wanted to hear what I was thinking. And I was 22. I, I was letting him know a lot because I, I thought I knew it all. <laughs> um, but we did, we had a great time. We had a great run. That's when, you know, Michael Bickford was a sophomore and mm-hmm. we had a run at the semis. We lost to Allentown. Um, who ended up, you know, I, I think losing to Delcy in like triple overtime in the state finals that year. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, Willie got that team rolling 
Um, Central was a football school and kids yeah. wanted to win. Those kids were about it building the program. Um, the next year, uh, 2015, I, I got the defense coordinator job and I, I was running with it. I, I think I was a little bit, uh, which got me to the point where I'm at now, but man, that was some long nights. I just wanted to be perfect. Like I was writing everything down. We were just getting huddle at that point. Mm-hmm. So I remember pen and pad and everything just uh, during my off periods, going from my master's classes to this, but I wouldn't trade that for a wor- you know, for the world. I was delivering pizzas. I was working three jobs and staying up till one to make sure that we were prepared. Um, but it taught me a lot. It taught me about the grit and determination and no one cares. Don't complain because no one cares. Um, so I try to instill that in my kids. Um, a few years later, Coach Fumundo came. Um, you know, he, he trusts. I, I interviewed for a job. I didn't know if he was going to give it to me or not. Um, I wasn't going in there to be a coordinator. I love football. I wanted to be around it. Um, you know, one thing led to another. I was, I was calling the defense again, and uh, we had a good run there. Um, you know, and I found myself a few years later, you know, chomping at the bit. I had I had a personal goal. Um, to be a head coach by the time I was 30. It was a little steep. I, you know, my original goal was to be a defense coordinator by the time I was 30, mm-hmm. but that changed awfully quickly. Um, <laughs> you know, so you, once you achieve your goals, you always want to set a higher one. Yeah. To set the um, I wanted to be a head coach by the time I was 30. That was something I've always been thinking about, uh, you know, leading the program and everything. And um, I did just that. So, you know, the, the new goals are set. Um, we have a good thing going at Central Regional. I have a great administration, man. They, they are awesome. Dr. P, all the way from the principals to our assistant superintendent, Dr. Corbett, um, you know, our athletic director, you know, John Scran. They are just in my corner, whatever we need. Um, they do it. They, they're just hats off to, to them. And our board of education, they've just been awesome, phenomenal for me, especially in the first year with the COVID. It was just mm. a lot of going back and forth, but they were on our side. Um, we got through the season, you know, even going forward, allowing me to instill uh, the culture that I want. Um, you know, I, I can't say enough about them and, you know, the environment of Central Regional. They really took me in and I've been there um, since 2014. So I'm very fortunate yeah. to be in such a great community and great school. Coach, that's a great uh, process story right there. I'm going to give you advice, though, on being a head coach. Now, you were 30. I was 32 at Barnegat. I had long hair, though, back then. You know, when you coach for 18 years, you start looking like this. So I don't know if this is going to scare you for your coaching journey, but I did have long hair when I was young. It does do that to your coach. You were at a crossroad um, in your life where you went to a prep school. Now, I want you to talk briefly about a prep school, because right now with the COVID, a lot of people are looking into prep schools, but for the wrong reason, wrong reason. Now, I, I do believe you were younger for your grade, too. I Correct. do right, right. So you Correct. going to a prep school, and then you getting recruited the next year. You're getting recruited with kids the same age of the thing because you could have been a junior your senior right. year, right? right? So I do yeah. remember that. But you went there. And not everybody goes to a prep school and everything goes great. You go to a yeah. prep school and you find out I don't want to be there. You go to a prep school finding out maybe I'm not as good as who I thought you are. But you blossomed. You blossomed. You did it academically, and you were you were being recruited by numerous schools after that. What made you turn the switch saying, I'm going in here and I'm going to be the positive person coming out of a prep school opposed to being the majority of the other people? Right. Like um, like you said, I, I was a little bit younger going into my senior year. I finished my se- senior year at 17 years old. Um, you know, I thought I was a lot better than what I was. But, you know, I, you get humbled a little bit. And um, Coach Donnie said I had to get my grades. Like, yeah, it's great, but I didn't take care of my grades. So mm-hmm. I knew that I had to go to. Um, a prep school if I wanted to, you know, further my career, you know, Division two, a scholarship money yeah. and all that stuff. Um, but to be honest with you, when you start talking about grades and going to a prep school, I, I'm not sure if it's any different now. But, you know, in 2007, 2008, around that time, um, my grade, I, I couldn't get into Han School, Blair. Like, yeah. They were taking high academics, high character, high, mm-hmm. high pro, you know what I mean? So they weren't, they so, took one look at the transcripts. I had to go to the military school route. You know, so I, you know, I applied to hard grades. I applied to here, mm-hmm. applied to there, and you had to go military. So, like, I had no choice, but that's my own fault. Um, I, I chose uh, Valley Forge Military Academy because it, it was the closest one to home. Mm-hmm. Um, they, they accepted me. They are like, yeah, it's, might as well give it a try. Mm-hmm. And they had some talent, man. Um, you know, kids from all over, you know, Baltimore, Pennsylvania, Maryland, Texas, California. Um, they, they had some high caliber kids. And, you know, 
like you're saying, you kind of gut check that first night. Um, it's not, it's not all football. Um, you you got to be mentally tough. You got to be physically tough behind the scenes. But um, you know, that first night when that that horn goes off at two a.m. just to make sure that you're uh you're squared away in your room just after you took six hours of folding all your clothes to six inches and mm-hmm. making sure you drop a dime on your bed. You know, some sergeant comes in and rips it all up, you know, just because, um, you know, so it took a lot of mental discipline and um, making sure I kept my cool. And I took that out on the football field. I was pretty fired up. I'm not going to lie to you. I was like second or third on the depth chart. I knew I was better than that. And once I get an opportunity, I'm going to seize it. And um, that, that's just kind of where that whole grit and determination kind of comes from, from an early age, you know, saying you're too small, too slow, all that stuff. Um, you know, what you hear all the time and you see the same kids, you know, just dominating on Fridays and Saturday afternoons. Um, so that's kind of where it all started for me. And I, um, I got my GPA up, had to take the SATs over. So I kind of redid that. They called it a prep year, the fifth year of, of high school. So yeah. I got my grades up and um, I signed up. I signed up Bloomsburg University and uh, on signing back then it was what, February 1st. I signed that dotted line, man, and I was out of there. That's awesome. I was out of that military uh, background. I went home. I worked construction, uh, build up some money, and then I was uh, I was off to Bloomsburg for uh, summer sessions for football and you know getting some early classes and you know the rest is history there with with those guys. I, I met the best friends of my life. Mm-hmm. We won games man we played in front of some big crowds and, and that was some great football I was kind of I think I overachieved there I, I'll be honest um, I probably shouldn't have been playing with some of the guys I've been playing with you know there's a guy Matt Filers you know starting tackle for the uh, Chargers now just signed a big deal um, you know my defensive end played for <laughs> uh, the Panthers for two years we had about four other guys that were with NFL teams and stayed with them it wasn't just little stints that you know that was some good football out there, and we had we had great runs. Our running back won the Division Two Heisman. Um, you know, it was some good coaching, good good hard nosed uh, football, and just the way we loved it. But yeah, that military school kind of it, it grew on you, but it it, it had to be done. Uh, I think it, it matured me in more ways than one. Coach, I mean, I'm smiling because you are just backing up what I said earlier about you got you had it, you have it. And, and hearing your story, you're undersized, you had all these things that you had to overcome, and you did it. And you said to yourself that, hey, I, I didn't think I should have been here. There was other players that were better. But there's something that you have that you just can't put a, a, a number on it and, and pinpoint it. But you got it. You really do. Success story. You, my friend, okay, helped me out. Because any time we had a prep kid or some other buddy was asking about prep, you were the first person I always called. Because right. you've been there, you saw it, you gave me the truth, you overcame it, because I wanted to hear success stories out of it. Yeah. And right. you are a success success story. All right, Coach, I'm going to take this thing off and rip it right off. I'm sick of wearing that mask. I'm not coaching anymore, so I don't know if you're wearing it or not wearing it anymore. Yeah. But, but last year, we all had to endure the COVID season that we were not prepared for. I don't want to hear nothing negative, Coach, about it. Just tell me something positive that you and your staff and your program learned with the COVID last year? Uh, you know, like many of the coaches that came on here before, um, you know, they mentioned the Google Classroom. They met all, the, you know, the Zoom meetings and doing all that. Um, you know, at the end of the day, as a, as a high school coach, and uh, whether it's a head coach, a coordinator, assistant coach, time is time. Uh, you know, with your family, your kids, uh, you see so many coaches that get burnt out because hours upon hours are, are done. I think uh, COVID, you know, especially on my end, um, it, it's time effective. Uh, you, you saw those Zoom meetings and you, you didn't have to go into the school. You were giving the kids off. I, I think it showed a lot of old school guys that, you know, thought long hours were, you know, working harder than the next man. Not really. If you're prepared, you can outwork people. Um, it doesn't mean you got to take six hours to do something that you can do in an hour and a half. You know, get in, do your job um, and get out. Um, you know, there, like you said, it was a little bit overwhelming first year as a head coach. I didn't have time to complain, so there was no negatives. I wanted, to, I wanted to, I was excited every time I was there, and the kids were excited because they were cooped up. Um, so just getting there and having seen the smiles on their faces and competing, we did a great job um, with withholding like the, you know, following the protocols and the face masks, keeping the social distancing, and doing everything that we needed to do. That, that was that was a big thing for a lot of the schools. 
Um, everyone had to be on board and everyone had to do the right thing. Um, we, we made it almost throughout the whole season. Uh, you know, we played almost all of our games till that last week. Um, and it was, you know, some of those things, some of it was out of your control. Um, and that was the most disheartening thing about it, you know, ending like that. But, um, you know, we did a great job and, and just keeping the kids positive. It was more than, you know, wins and losses. You know, I, I had a coach say, yeah, you're playing with house money last year. Yeah, I guess you're right. But uh, it, it is what it is. I wanted those kids on the field experience. And I, I had a senior year. You had a senior year. Um, I say to the kids all the time, these coaches, like, we played. We had our part. If you're not, you know, taking advantage of every moment that you have here, especially last year, that was almost something I was saying almost daily. Take advantage of the moments that you have because you don't know when it's going to be done. You really don't. It could be tomorrow. like, And that's kind of how it ended. Mm -hmm. um, but we took full advantage. And I think it, we enjoyed um, – you know, pride the practices where the kids are kind of moaning, you know, two or three months in. They had a great job. They loved being out there and they loved competing. Um, just having, I had a great group of seniors, man. It was the high character kids, high academic kids. Um, and I just wanted to get them out there. It was kind of like pulling this guy in, making sure his grades were good and um, just making sure everyone was squared away. But um, I think the positive was it happened. You know what I mean? It, it happened. There was, and, and it's time effective. We, we showed that we didn't have to, you know, do yeah. 12 months of everything. Um, but we're out there. I mean, obviously anybody will be able to counter me like, Hey, the weightlifting, I understand all that, but the kids got to play. The injuries were not what we really thought they were going to be. I was very nervous about ligaments and joints and, and the shoulders and the head and the neck. Um, that was something that very concerned me not being in the weight room and being mm -hmm. uh, coached under, you know, our supervision, but you know, it, it happened it, knock on wood and you know, the kids did a great job. And I think that was a credit to uh, everyone involved, parents, kids, you know, administration and coaches. We learned a lot coach. I'm going to give you some things. First of all, control us football coaches. We need yeah. control. We need to know that, that we're in control of our program. So it was out of our hands. We had to trust, right. we had to trust our people. We had to trust our parents and all that stuff. We all did. It was no different yeah. here or there or whatever. Um, my wife always said to me, she goes to me now, she goes, I think you should still coach because you don't have to coach for seven hours now. You could do it on your zoom and go right. home. I stay home and do all that stuff. So that was the thing. And I'm going to tell you something, this about practicing three out the state made us practice two hours yep. and we seem to adapt. We, we yep. adapt coach. We played St. John Vianney. We got, we were supposed to play Asbury park the last game. They had COVID. So we had two days of like, we better find a game or we're not going to play. Vienni calls us up and goes, we want to play you. I said, all right. So two dates. I said, okay. So the first day we just watched film. The second day is a walkthrough, but we practiced for 45 minutes and we played the best game we ever did. We, right. So you don't need all these long hours and all this. Kids will adapt and they prove to us coaches that we better start adapting too because there are easier ways. It's quantity or quality, all that stuff right there. But you're right. But I read all your tweets in the off season during the COVID and boy, oh boy, I felt excited to play for you because you could just feel how, how excited you were that every, you had control of your program from where you were and you did a really nice job with the COVID. It was very positive uh, with, with what you were doing um, behind the scenes. It really was. Okay. Now coach Pidge, I'm going to ask you, can you please talk about your central high school football schedule, which is on the left-hand side of the screen. And then when you're done, we're going to talk about the newly assembled Liberty division, which has a bunch of different faces that I want to hear your opinion on, on those teams. So coach, it's your floor on the left. Yeah, we picked up a uh, week one, week zero game, whatever you have you at uh, September 3rd, mm -hmm. uh, Heightstown, they're coming to central. Um, we know they're well coached. Another group four school um, out there. I, I know they're well coached by Coach Fulton. He's doing a great job with that program out there. Um, you know, we're looking forward to, to having them down here in the shore and, um, you know, for a good night of football. We know they're, that they're tough and they're well coached defensively and, and they, they love running the ball and um, we can't wait to face those guys. Uh, Neptune's going to be a great game as well coming in. Uh, Central, they're, they're always athletic. They're always going to hit you in the mouth, um, and they'll be right back the next play no matter what happens. So um, we know they're, that they're under a new reign over there, so uh, we're excited to see what he does with the program. Um, Free Old Township, we travel, um, you know, in Monmouth County. 
uh, Coach Davies and everybody. Uh, you know, we can't wait to see those guys. Um, you know, we played them a few years back, so we're a little bit familiar with them, um, but we haven't seen them in a few years. So it's uh, exciting to get back up there. Uh, Raritan, obviously, I mean, well coached, uh, tough kids. Uh, defensively, they're always running to the ball and, and they love, uh, they're so disciplined. Uh, just watching them is always fun on film. We haven't had a chance to play them since I've been here. I believe we scrimmaged them back in like 2014, 2015, and that was a physical, physical scrimmage. Um, Marlboro, we saw them about two years ago. Um, Coach Degato does a great job. We have a, you know, a few uh, coaches on there that we're familiar with. Um, they, they do an awesome job, man. It's always a good game against them a few years back. Um, you know, I, th I believe it was overtime. Uh, they're well coached and, and they're fun to watch. Uh, at Madawan, we have, I've never played them. Um, so we had to get some uh, all season recruiting with, going on with them, trying to get some films. Um, they are athletic, they're explosive. Um, you know, getting back to the old Madawan days there, uh, I think he's doing a great job out there. Uh, and obviously, uh, Southern comes to, uh, to Central. That's always a. a a game that we look forward to. Um, we, we, we played for a trophy that kind of goes back and forth. Um, we had it for a few years. Southern's had it for a few years. So um, it's always a great game. And it, uh, emotions are always high, uh, uh -huh. rightfully so, between the both sidelines. Um, those guys kind of saw me grow up since I was a little kid. So it's, you know, I'm, I'm a little fired up usually when uh, that game goes on. But it, it's such a great game all the time. It's a lot of noise, uh, a lot of helmets, a lot of shoulder pads. Uh, hitting, but uh, that, that's a great game. It's usually around, um, you know, this year it's a little bit closer to October, but usually that's towards the end of the season. And we'll see where that uh, the short conference pod kind of takes us. Um, but the Liter Liberty Division, man, we uh, wait, wait coach, for coach. Let me just interject a little bit for that schedule, real quick. Just I want to talk about. We'll talk about your division in a second. But right. your non-conference games. I, I, I when I look at your schedule and see your non-conference, usually. Non-conference games are a little softer, a little more, you know, comfortable so you can get some some confidence and all that. But I'm looking at it. You play three tough games. And, and that, Heights Town, that Heights Town game, you're playing week zero. They're right. an up-and-coming team by Coach Fullen, Group 4 school, and they're going right. to be pretty good this year. That's going to be a very interesting game to open up with. And then Raritan, who Coach, um, Coach Petruzzi compared – you guys to, to them from Ocean County, Monmouth County, very uh, uh, similar type teams, uh, very well respected there. They have a view and, you know, they're they're going to be gunning for a state championship this year. They're now in the South Jersey group, too. And Southern Regional is going to be one of the top teams year in, year out. And they got some big time players. So that that's a pretty tough schedule there. I mean, but you that's what you want. You want that play big games, right? Absolutely. I, I mean, Coach Full, I mean, that was a great uh, compliment by Coach Petruzzi. We're hoping to get to where, uh, you know, the stature program that that he's running up there, that mm -hmm. he's run for over a decade. But, yeah, uh, Rob, uh, we want that. Uh, you know, we're, we're trying to play in November. We're, we're trying to play for state playoffs. So that's what we look for. We want to be uh, battle-tested. Town's a great team. We knew that. We knew that going into it. We wanted a group four team. Um, we popped up and we made some things happen with that game. Um and we're going to see things early. We want our kids to test it. Um, mm -hmm. You know, going into Raritan, you better be able to, you know, that's why our scrimmage schedule is not weak either. You know, mm -hmm. scrimmage times over south, we go to Coltsneck and Manalpin, mm -hmm. and then we have SJV. Like, we're not we're not here for the, <laughs> you know, walks in the park. Those guys, no. are, those are the top programs around, um, and we want to be able to get on a bus. I mean, you see free old townships not around the corner from us no. either. You got to be able to travel 40 minutes, 45 minutes, get off the bus and go to – you know, go to war with those guys. So mm -hmm. um, that that's what we look for. And, and like I said, man, uh, hopefully we do our job. Um, we get through the pods and, mm -hmm. you know, we'll be playing first round of, of state playoffs. And that's what we're focusing on is making playoffs. Well, you definitely got to go in that right direction, Coach. Let's talk about the division out of Liberty. Now, before I keep saying the same thing, I'm going to tell you this. In the short conference, I believe – there's there, there's a many many well coached teams and and I'm they're all well coached in your division. Let's just say that so I don't keep saying the same thing. But looking at your schedule, I cannot pick the order top to five. If I had to pick the order who's going to finish at the end of the year, I'm going to look like a, a, a jerk. So I'm going to not pick it 
um, in the preseason, this Liberty division, because it's very, very competitive. Just looking from, from the bottom up in terms of what is what you've seen on the right-hand side, you have Neptune, who has a new coach and Coach Duffy, and they have athletes, and they got a lot of key kids coming back and, and that are going to be very good defensively, more on the D-line linebacker. You have Matawan with Coach Graber now taking everything from Allentown. This is his third season at Matawan. I think he's going to turn the switch, and you're going to start seeing some big-time results. Just added Coach Martucci to the staff, and he's got some quality players coming back too. You have Marlboro, which has this um, – mentality of playing physical football, a big group five school coach. Um, so, and they got some, a, a good nucleus of kids coming back in Friel Township, which is an air raid spread out a totally different kind of philosophy that you're going to see year a week in week out. Co- coach Davies is very successful in, in the, in the air raid and he's a big school too. So that's your, your schools in your division. How do you like being in, in this division you're not playing your prototypical B South or A South teams now. So it's a bunch of new faces. And of course you're new to them too. So take it from right. there. You know, it's just, uh, like you said, it's a bunch of new faces. So, you know, in my, in my standpoint of, from a preparation, you know, that's something we enjoy doing as a staff. We like, uh, you know, breaking down the films and, and figuring things out and, it, and it's all new faces. I guess you can, you know, go through the nuances of, of seeing the same teams year in and year out. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, some people like it, some people don't. Uh, these guys are tough um, and it's anybody's ball game, like you said. And I think that's what's the fun of it. Um, it's what you're doing week in and week out. You know, I can say the, the cliche, we're focused on Heightstown. You know, we can look up at the Liberty Division and, you um, you know, this and that we're focused on week one and, and taking it day by day. We want to get, you know, we want to win each practice right now. That's the, that's the results that we want um, showing up tomorrow on Wednesday and getting better. Did we get better? Or we take two steps back. Um, that's solely on the kids. Are they working hard? Are they doing the th- little things, uh, do your job, you know, be where your feet are. That's something we constantly preach. Um, and the little things will take care of itself. If you're running to the line, if you're um, going through the drills, a hundred percent, Um, because that thing shows on film and we better be running to the ball. Um, So like you said, every coach in the short conference, you know, they got there through their process. Um, Everyone's got a story. Everyone's got great coaches. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, so we're excited for the year. Uh, It's another year to to get better and um, we'll see. And like you said, it's not a cupcake division. It's we don't have a cupcake schedule and we don't want it like that every week. We want it to be a, you know, we want to be in a game. Um, and that's something that why we coach and that's why our kids want to start coming to Central Regional, you know, uh, from a youth standpoint, um, you know, they want to play in big games and they mm-hmm. want to start playing for championships. And um, that, that's something that we're focusing on and building it from the ground up. Coach, let's just agree on this. It's going to be very exciting for the fans of the short conference watching right. this division unfold. Right. All right. Now, coach, this part right here is where I want to hear a bunch of guys that make you look good week in, week out, that are glued to your program. The kids look up to them, and that is your assistant football coaches on, on your staff. So let's hear some names of, of some of your coaches. Absolutely. Uh, you know, we'll start with the off- offensive side of the ball uh, for the varsity level. Uh, our offensive coordinator and offensive line coach is Frank Papalia. Um, he's got a great reputation. He's been around uh, the short conference for quite some time. Um, we're excited to have him. He's been at uh, at Rumson for a few years, so we're, we're bringing some championship mentality to uh, you know to Ocean County. So we're we're very excited. He's a former alumni, so we're always excited to bring those guys back in. Um, our quarterback coach is Danny Higgins, uh, someone who I brought over from Southern Regional. Had a lot of you know success with Chuck. I believe he was a graduate in 2012. He you know threw only a few touchdowns to a guy who plays for the Dolphins, so it made him look pretty good. But Danny's a uh, you know, a great quarterback coach, great young mind, and we're excited to have him. Uh, one of the big pickups in our the offseason for us was Paul Carazzola. Um, he's going to be our wide receivers, tight ends uh, coach. Uh, he's also taken over. Uh, I passed the baton with him, and me and him kind of tag team the, the strength and conditioning component of, uh, of our program. Uh, Paul played at Rutgers. Paul had a short stint at, uh, you know, with the Raiders. Um, he's got his certifications and in, in strength and conditioning. He's, you know, one of a handful in New Jersey. So that's something we're really taking pride in. Um, from a weight room standpoint, it's something that's kind of folded over with our with our program. Um, the kids have been in there since January and something that we take pride in. 
um, you know, trying to get their name on the board, on the leaderboard in, in the weight room. It's something that those kids kind of um, find strength in and uh, it's something that they get to look at every day. Mm. Uh, running backs is Kyle Watson. Um, he was with uh, Wall Township the past few years. Um, if you remember, uh, I know you're a short conference guy. He, he was a very good quarterback in the early 2000s for the old Brick Township, Brick Township. with uh, yeah. you know, Coach Wolf. Um, you know, he brings a mentality of, you know, hard nose and he's coaching our kids hard and they're taking a liking to him. Um, another assistant offensive line coach is Frank Backle. Um, you know, young guy, he's, he's always got a great mind. He loves football. Um, played at Tom's River East and, you know, was out at Mount Union. So he, he's been around some great football and those guys are really meshing together on the offensive side of the ball. Um, they kind of lighten the load over there. They've been bringing a philosophy and, and, and they chat every day and they got the Google forms and they're, you know, the sheets and they're constantly adapting and they got our kids going and believing right now. So it, it's an exciting thing to watch. And um, I really am excited for that, for that side of the ball. Uh, defensive line, um, Will Will Cannon, um, he, he was a big name at Brick Memorial. Uh, he was kind of a terror uh, early, you know, I would say 2010. I believe he's around 2010, 2011. He was a great defensive lineman. Um, ended up playing at Lamar University um, out in Texas. Um, I do the inside linebackers. My outside linebacker coach is uh, James Plummer. Uh, awesome guy. Uh, one, of, one of my close friends that I, I've grown fond of over the years. He actually just got back from, um, you know, he, he was probably a few spots away from making the Olympics in Tokyo throwing uh, the discus. Uh, he's an explosive dude. He's a big dude. Another guy that, you know, a Rutgers product. Um, and he's also a central alum. Uh, defensive backs is uh, Coach uh, Terrence Hardy. Uh, he's he's been awesome for us the last few years, and has really came on as a as a great defensive backs coach. And he also does our special teams. Uh, he takes pride in it, man. He, he's really been running with it. And um, I've been been with him since he's came. He came in with uh, in 2016. Um, he, he played at Kane, uh, another central alum, um, and we, he's kind of ran with it. You know, my father's always around. Um, my mom kind of throws him out of the house, and then, you know, we got to deal with him on the sidelines. But uh, my dad's always a good veteran guy to have on, on both sides of the ball, and the kids really like him. Um, you know, they laugh at all his jokes and everything, kind of gets him going. But <laughs> it, it, it's always a good to have, uh, you know, those veteran guys around. Um, then our freshman staff, uh, it's going to be Tommy Koenig, who's our assistant. Tommy was a, a central alum. He had a great career over at um, TCNJ, at wide receiver, ended up being a first-team all-conference guy. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just an overall good, great guy, man, great family, um, just a big central alum. Uh, he's just been great with our kids, and he, he teaches over in our Seaside Heights uh, elementary school, so that's a sending district for us. So he kind of – we have, you know, bases everywhere kind of covered. And then our head freshman coach is uh, Walter Karasevich, um, who's just been awesome, man. He's been having the numbers come back each year. And we want those kids learning the game, having fun, um, learning which side that they want to play on. Um, and he gets those numbers back, man. We, you know, we're graduating, I think, like 20. Our senior class this year is like 26 kids, followed up by like another 23 kids. So we, we have some good numbers. And this year we're excited for the freshman team. They have about 37 kids. Um, so it, it's exciting to see um, kids are, you know, kids in the community are excited about what we're doing. Um, and as am I, uh, the administration has been great with us, allowing us to uh, to build our program and do whatever we need to do. Um, and I, I can't say enough great things about, you know, Central Regional and, and what we're doing. Uh, we had our first youth camp, um, you know, tied in with the AYF, of course. Um, those guys were great giving us the balls and, you know, the, the little kids' balls. We had a great time there. Uh, I believe it was well ran. The kids had fun. We had, uh, you know, some Tom and D's Italian ice. Uh, mm -hmm. Kids were running around. Music were blasting. So you can't really go wrong, man. No. You can give them some free shirts, uh, some Italian ice. You got my you attention. Get, you said Italian right, ice. Right. I, I got you. It's just flowing, man. And, yeah. you know, we'll, we'll build it. We had uh, 44 kids this year. Uh, we're looking to uh, continue to be successful within our program. Um, set standards um, and exceed those and then build on it and have those younger kids, you know, see the, these faces and, and be consistent throughout the years um, and really make this a place, uh, you know, that people want to go and, and, you know, attend the games and, and go to school and, and root for us. So, you know, one town, one community, it's a tight knit community. Mm -hmm. um, we're excited to build on it.
Coach, that, that's a pretty impressive staff. And I, just a couple things from coach to coach. I loved hearing you, and every coach does it when they mention their young coaches. They elevate and they get excited. Now, you're still young. So when you say young, we're, I mean, it's awesome. When As you get older, you're going to have more younger coaches coming up the ranks underneath you because you started out as one of the youngest coaches in Ocean County. It keeps – everything um uh, it changes things with with veteran coaches when you get young coaches in that are that are positive with the kids and all that it's just the morale is different in the locker room it really is and you got some veteran coaches here i want to talk about two of them so you have coach papali a great addition great addition to your staff i've known him for years and all his many many stops and of course it's great to see that he's back at where he started his high school days, Coach Papali, bringing a lot of experience in all the places. You being a younger coach, having a guy like that who's been a head coach, and now he's your OC, and I know he's excited about where he's at right now. How has it helped you? Uh, I mean, it's it, it's like you said, you kind of touched on it. Uh, it's been a tremendous help, uh, whether it's X's and O's, it's uh, administrative things, uh, things that I'm not thinking about. As a head coach, as you know, you, your head's spinning. Uh, always getting pulled in the right direction and doing this, doing that, um, you know, tell me to calm down a little bit and take it easy. Cause I'm always so high strung getting, getting in there super early. Um, it's been, it's been awesome, man. He really has, he's taken the reins and um, not only for myself, but like you said, the, the younger coaches, it, it's someone that those guys can go to um, bounce off questions. And the way I, I coach the team um, and the way we run our staff is, Hey man, you, you got something to say you want to bring to the table. Everyone's got an opinion, but you better have something to back it up. And we're okay with that. And that's the way our, our, uh, our staff's been, it's been gelling and it, and it's been phenomenal. Uh, the kids are buying into it. And that's the biggest thing that I like when, um, the kids see it, the kids know it. Um, and we're all on the same page. Um, you know, I, I can't say enough great things about him and, and the addition. And once again, man, he, he's an alumni that, knows a lot of people. Uh, he's been a lot of places uh, and he's got a lot of the same beliefs and values that, uh, that I have. And I always joke around with him. He, he's got a young son and I always joke. I'm like, it's just such a great thing. Cause I, I see myself and, and, and his son, you know, just coming around to practices and it's not like having a, a kid running around and you don't know where he is. Like he's right there. He's engaged. He knows like this, he's a young kid and he knows what he's talking about already. Um, and it, it's just been a great thing. It's been, a, um, great situation for all of us on the staff and he's been taking the reins and running with it. Um, you know, and, and we have discussions, you know, daily, nightly, uh, whatever it takes. And I think we're all on, on course to make this program great. Um, and, and that's something that is my main focus to, you know, to get the strength coach, get the offensive coach, get those veteran guys in there, building a program, um, getting those youth ties, um, and, and having a community man like, like Frank, uh, you know, on our, in our program and, and, and around our community is such a great thing for not only myself, my staff, but uh, th this program. Now, there's one other guy, a veteran guy, and I'm going to tell you right now, my best coach was my dad. My dad was my best coach. And there's one guy that may have been real tough with you in the past. You know that when he always brought you at Lacey and threw you in a locker room and all we would hear is things getting – pushed into lockers and you come back with your hat all messy and your dad would giggle and laugh. But there's a guy that is so proud of you right now. I've talked to him many, many times about it and he is such a good role model for you. Yeah. And he's now on your staff. Um, how important is it for you to have your father who you looked up to for all the years on your staff, you live in a dream at central. Uh, I mean, uh, I don't know, man. He's been, uh, he's been there like the whole time since I was seven. So it's, I, he actually came over, I mean, shoot, 2015 when I got my first DC job, he kind of came over as coaching D line. Um, sometimes it's, uh, he cares because it's almost like, you know, I don't even know how to say it when, when you're a father and you're looking after your son, you're, you're trying to make, you're trying to protect your baby boy, but you know, those things kind of get in the way, but man, it's been, uh, it's been unreal. Yeah. Uh, to be coached, it's, like I said, attached to his hip, um, to play under him at, at you know, at, at Southern to, uh, he didn't miss a game at Valley Forge and, uh, you know, at Bloomsburg and, you know, those, those weren't easy rides, man. Those were, you know, it's division two. So you're taking 12 hour yeah. bus rides. 
uh, you know, 10 hour bus ride to Ohio, doing whatever you got to do. And there he was with, you know, my mom just, you know, going, running that Ultima into the ground. And now uh, here we are coaching, man. It, the first year of 2014, I saw him across the, uh, the way. He was still with Coach Donahue because he was so loyal to him. Mm -hmm. he, he's played such a role in my family, mm -hmm. um, you know, throughout the years. And, yeah. you know, selfishly, uh, I think my dad took a, upon himself to, you know, save for that opportunity and come over to Central. And once again, the administration's welcome with open arms. It's, you know, it's just, you know, Papa Pidge and he's just around. The kids enjoy it. Yeah. Um, there's not many, t there's not many coaches around that are that age. I've seen that so much things yeah. um, and things slow down for him. And when I'm like yelling around, I'm running around and just, he kind of just grabs me and kind of, you know, whispers in my ear, like, hey, you should probably look at this or look like this. And, and it's been on top of having coach, you know, Papa Lee around and, just having my dad, you know, 10 feet away, just taking in everything, not stepping on anyone's toes. Um, he gets a little fired up on Friday nights. We got to, <laughs> yeah. we got to tame him a little bit, um, but he's been better and uh, man, it's been a blessing, but uh, I'm, I'm just excited to where I am, where we're going to be going and as a program. And uh, I couldn't be doing it without the people and my staff and, and the guys that have helped me along the way and given me the opportunities uh, and I just can't think like central has been so good to me. Uh, I really have no words for, for where I'm at at this point in my life. Yeah. He, uh, wherever your dad is, those players love him. Whoever right. he is, he love him. He's a great personality guy. Great. A very good coach, very loyal, um, assistant coach. And of course him, you, you kind of know him from a long time ago. So a uh, very good football coach for you and your staff too. So you're living a dream. All right. Now coach, here's where the fun starts. I want you to talk about your 2021 central regional football team. But before you go on, I'm just asking you, just tell everybody here on here, what you guys run offensively, defensively. And then let's talk about those underclassmen that have you smiling from, from cheek to cheek. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, offensively or multiple pro. Uh, you'll see us, you know, in a few different sets. Uh, and defensively, we're multiple three, four. We kind of adapt week to week, uh, put guys in the right situations to be successful. Um, you want me to get right into it? Yeah, like, Coach, let's talk, talk about your some of your players that you got that I know that you're excited about. All right, we'll start with the uh, the offensive side of the ball. I'll kind of just give you a, a brief overview yeah. of some of the guys that have been, uh, you know, working hard in the offseason. That's the big thing that we want to emphasize, uh, you know, especially with me building the program and, you know, it's an all year thing. If you're not playing multiple sports, you're in the weight room, you're doing the right things, keeping the grades up, staying out of trouble and being a, a role model. Um, you know, we'll start with quarterback uh, junior JJ Garcia. Um, he's got a live arm. He's athletic, he's smart, and he wants to be great. So uh, it's been something that, you know, he picked up lacrosse. I, I love when the kids compete um, and they're in different sports. We, we really preach that, especially at Central. Uh, our best athletes have to play those multiple sports. We're successful in basketball. We're successful in baseball. Track and field has always been something that we've been strong at. So we want our kids competing, and that lacrosse program is going to come, um, you know, in full fruition in a few years, and they're just getting that building. J.J. has been a big part of that. Uh, Devin Sissler is a young freshman behind him, uh, competing with him. He's had a great summer. Um you know, he's got big, he's got a bright future. He's learning the offense day by day, and he's getting better. Uh, running backs, uh, Chase Gumbert, he's a junior. Um, you know, he's probably going to be our number one guy going into it, but you're going to see a few other guys. Chase is an explosive kid. He's been, uh, he got a lot of a lot of carries as a sophomore, mm -hmm. um, you know, behind Nicky Sura. Um, so we've seen some action. He, he's been in some tight games, and, and he runs hard. That kid's a competitor, and he wants to win. Um, you know, another guy you're going to see, and you'll hear the name, he started getting a few carries last year, is Andre Rogenkamp. He's a senior. Someone who really bought in, got into the track and field, um, did all the right things, um, worked his tail off in the weight room, and, and, and it's really coming to light on the field now. He's been opening our eyes, um, on, you know, just everywhere. Uh, Dominic Frollo is, is someone that may get some touches as well. He's been a three-year starter for me on, on, on the defensive side of the ball at, at Strong Safety. Uh, fullback, obviously, Anthony Musa. A lot of a lot of people know him catching the ball. He's got soft hands. He's tough. Uh, true Bayville kid, man. Uh, blue collar, put his head right in the in the mess, and that's a, a throwback kid that you know I, I really uh, I tough. really enjoy watching play. He's tough. Yeah, he's absolutely. Tough. All right, and uh, tight ends. We got Michael Rapola. Uh, he's going to be a senior. 
uh, just a great kid, a uh, great academic kid. He, he bought into everything. I, I mean, he's one of our 90% attendance kids. He's been there every freaking day since January, buying in. His power clean shot up like, I want to say, damn near 40 pounds. He's just buying in. Um, and we love to see him be successful this year. Mm -hmm. We got a young guy following in his footsteps, Luke Kraskowski. Um, He's going to have a bright future, a basketball kid. Um, you know, other great hands. He's going to be well coached by Coach Carazola, who's been there, done that. Um, so those kids are kind of glued to his hip and, and figuring out what's going on. Uh, some of the wide receivers, um, Danny Morris is going to be a two-way guy for us. I believe he's one of the more dynamic guys at corner, um, and, and we got we to gotta get him some touches offensively, um, you know, whether it's one way or another. But uh, he's been buying into his leadership role um, as he's getting older. Uh, some guy that's been popping out to us lately and, and just buying in are, are some two-way sport guys, uh, some baseball. You probably recognize them from Central's uh, successful season. Shane Sagewitz and, and Chase Pierce, they've been uh, dynamic baseball players in the springtime, really putting on. With, and we say if you're going to play another sport, be the best. Um, be the best at what you're doing and dominate and compete in everything you do. Um, those guys have been have been bringing the noise. If they're not playing baseball, they're in the weight room. Um, you know, those, those two have been awesome for us. Shane's – been flirting with uh you know some outside linebacker reps um so another some two-way guys there and uh, another guy i want to mention is tony brinson uh, who's going to be a junior just explosive a little a quick twitch kid and Go ahead. and our uh, offensive line man we got nick brewer senior uh jack vandenberg peyton dasty uh todd dudley aaron Josa, um and rudy renderer is the lone junior on that uh offensive line so we're senior dominated those kids are all been buying in uh, doing whatever we ask since January, uh, buying into the weight room, getting stronger, which is something that we uh, constantly preach. Uh, from the defensive side of the ball, Logan Brennan on defensive line is a junior. He's a returning starter for us. He's a tough, hard-nosed kid, you know, gets the ball quick, plays flat down the line, so we're excited to see what he does. Uh, Trey Mitchell and Nico Nasser are going to be uh, quick twitch kids off the line. Uh, a lot of movement with those guys, but uh, they're athletic. Um, and they're strong, so they come from their hips, and, uh, you know, they, they use their hands well. Uh, at, at linebacker, you know, you might see some Musso at defensive end, get his hand in the dirt, and then at linebacker, just move him around because he's a dynamic player. Um, Al Bechtel, who um, has been with me from the beginning, man, he's, what a great kid he is. Um, I'm excited to see his senior year. Um, he's been, you know, he was kind of penciled in as a starter last year as a junior. Um, ended up breaking his wrist in one of the scrimmages. Um, and it was just going back and forth with, you know, the cast with a kid who's just been a program kid from um, everything you ask. He, he does it and he does it right. Um, and he's just been a pleasure to coach. Caden um, Barker and Javon Tate, um, somebody that we're, we're excited for both of those guys. They're going to be upcoming juniors. Um, and, and they're fast. They get to the ball and they're very knowledgeable of the game. Um, Scott Nico is a sophomore. He's been kind of making some noise for us um, at the outside linebacker, a kid who's been in the weight room since January. So he's familiar with what we're doing. Another uh, high academic kid that's been picking up what we do defensively. Uh, I'm very excited about the defensive backs. Um, three of these guys, you know, were, were three-year starters. Uh, Danny Morris is, you know, we got him some time as a freshman when we were down with some numbers. Uh, I think one of his first starts was Tom Zara North when they had uh, – you know, yeah. their, their brigade of guys. So he, he's seen some talent. Um, Dominic Frollo, like I mentioned before, three-year starter at safety. Um, Colin Steimel uh, is someone who started for us as a, uh, as a sophomore at corner, um, you know, ended up having some injury issues. Uh, junior year, he kind of moved away out of state. Um, and now he's back for a senior year. Uh, we are excited for him. Mm -hmm. He is explosive. He grew a few inches. I know you saw the seven-on-seven seven at Barnegat. Man, he's, uh, he can move. Uh, so he's going to be playing all over the place, especially in the defensive backfield. We're going to let these kids be good at what they're good at. Uh, but Colin can do it all. He's got great hips, great feet, um, and he's got range, man. So we can put him at the corner. We can put him in the middle of the field on a play center field. And uh, a kid I'm excited for just for the natural reason of, of just hard work and grit is uh, Joe Ruggiero. Um, a kid who bought in. Uh, he's been in the weight room. He didn't miss a day. Another 90% attendance kid. Um, you can see how much faster he's got, more explosive. And it's it's cool for me as a coach to, you know, constantly preach it. And then these kids do it. Um, and you see the, 
the things that kind of come to fruition when they're in the weight room and how much faster and their bodies change and they're becoming uh, young adults and everything. So it, it's just awesome to see. So we're excited on both offensive and uh, defensive side of the balls. And I can't really forget, uh, you know, it'll probably give me a shrug tomorrow, but our kicker, yeah. man. Uh, One of the best kicker, around, like, Coach. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I don't tell him that too often. Yeah. Uh, you know, but he's – uh. You know, I call him killer. He's got ice in his veins. You know, I, as a sophomore, I, you know, sophomore, he hit a 40-yarder against yeah. RBR with, like, no time left. And, of course, they run back a kick. But, you know, for that kid to hit that in that type of game, and it was cold. It wasn't warm out. Like, that's that tough on a kicker's foot. And um, the kid, he's mellow, you know, and he, he's got a leg on him. So it, it's, it's going to be a weapon for us. Um, and we're just excited for, for this group of kids, another big senior class for us. And that, that's what I enjoy, um, you know, seeing these kids come from sophomores, um, even knowing them in the middle school, uh, you know, the group that this guy, these guys have had together, you know, whether it be youth baseball, uh, basketball, uh, these kids compete and they want to win. Um, and, and that's the hunger that we want to see and, and something that we can build on. And, and we're looking forward to, you know, like I said, playing in November. That's that's our big emphasis, being where your feet are and win each day, each rep. That's the most important thing right now. Um, and the, the kids will probably be tired of hearing about that, but I don't care as long as it's ingrained in their head. Yeah. Um, each rep is, is is the most important one. Coach, so, I mean, you, that, I mean, I, I mean, I seen it up close. That's why at the seven on seven, I thought I, I love the interaction between the coaches and the players and and the players. Go, buying in. I just love that. I love during this. I don't care who wins or loses. It's all getting better and getting better, but you got right. some guys that can run. You have some top players coming back. Your three all division guys, Hurley, who's your biggest offensive weapon. And I say that because the punt is the, I mean, when can you ever run a play? It's 30 something yards. You just don't want to run that play 10 times in a game punting. Right. All right. But Hurley is a kicker, a punter. You got Morris as a DB receiver looked really good in the seven on sevens root caught a real nice corner, uh, corner touchdown against Barnicket. And then Musso is a stud D lineman fullback. He's just, he's just like your heart and soul seems like of your physicality of your team. But I like J.J. Garcia. I like him as a quarterback, and I know you got that that big freshman back backing him up and all that stuff. So you got a good foundation of players to play around with. You really do. You really do. Right. And um, uh, you know, but I'll mention all those kids that you mentioned are good kids. They're yes sir, no sir kids, which is is something that is huge for our numbers. You know, mm -hmm. especially coming in with freshmen, they see now they're seeing how we're doing it, and we're doing it the right way. Um, we coach hard. We love you harder. Um, and, the, and the kids know that and, and they see that. And the accountability is something that they want. When we say 745 in the morning, we, we mean it. Uh, get there on time. And we want your full attention. We're not talking. No headphones, no hats. Uh, I'm probably the oldest 30 year old you'll see. Um, I, I have you know things that I was raised on. And, you know, you're not going to have your hat on in the building and, and, and all that. So it. it it's exciting to see and how this process is unfolding. Um, and we're just very excited for our, our upcoming season. And we're just chomping at the bit to get, like I said, to Wednesday, because that's the most important day is getting the one and own being where your feet are. Yeah. Well, I'm going to look forward coach. I'm going to look forward to following you guys, covering you guys and watching your program grow, which I know is going in the right direction. A lot of exciting times ahead of you, not just Wednesday. During the season two, right. <laughs> Just I, during the season two, coach, thank you for coming on the show. I really, yeah. uh, I really appreciate it. It was a honor to have somebody like you on the show that we've had ties for years and years and years. You know, I've always said this and I'm going to say this. I wish I coached you my first class at Barnegat instead of you playing us at Southern and beating us yeah. on Thanksgiving. I, you know, right. I mean, um, I really wish I got a chance to coach you just because who you are and not just as a coach, but as a player all around, you're a quality guy and have a bright future. You really do. Um, you really do. So if you guys ever need anything, make sure you go to the shortfootballreport.com and we will give you anything that you need. And I want to make sure that I make football exciting for you guys, just because you're doing some exciting things on the field. So it makes us reporters work hard. It really does coach. All right. Absolutely. I appreciate no, thank you so much for having us. We're, we were looking forward to this and, uh, 
you know, I, I made a joke. We had to cut practice early because I had to run out of there, to, you know, make sure we were on time for this. Man, we can't miss these. It's kind of worth thank- it. It's kind of worth it. Yeah. I feel, man. <laughs> big, so All we right. appreciate it letting us talk about our program. Thank you. Anytime, Coach. I'll talk to you soon.